Uh, my name is Wadi White. I am an artist living and working in Omaha, Nebraska. I moved here in about in 2006. I'm a transplant from Chicago most recently, but moved around quite a bit before that. I'm a painter and a printmaker, and about half the work I do are community-based public, uh, public art projects that uh, generally focus on something that is uh, collaborative and leans towards social justice. I moved to Omaha in 2006, like I said, and pretty quickly um, settled my studio uh, downtown. My studio is now based in a neighborhood called Little Bohemia. As a printmaker, the mediums, all the mediums that I work in are two-dimensional, so there's a lot of drawing, a lot of painting. My printmaking winds up being uh, single block woodcuts, um, sometimes on a, on a intimate scale, sometimes on a very massive scale. When I'm not at the studio, um, it's usually, well, for the last several months at least, or probably six months before that, uh, it's been when I would be installing um, work outside uh, or doing site visits to try to make a uh, public project be a little bit more specific to the places that it's going to. Three um, important things, um, like in, in my studio, or in the, at least in this part of my studio. Um, actually, I've got four, I've got a fourth one downstairs. So the first is um, a, a small library that I uh, assembled for my show at UNO um, that happened in January. And in doing that, I also brought in a collection of about 70 uh, books that had uh, personal significance to me. Uh, a second thing that, that I have in here uh, is a landscape easel that uh, I have held and used for probably about 25 years. A small easel that's collapsible to about the size of a suitcase that you can carry around with, uh, on a, uh, just a strap over your shoulder has probably enabled me to produce a, well over a thousand paintings. Things like that, little little uh, useful uh, tools, like, like that easel. Things that are easy to understand, although they contain a certain like humble brilliance about the way that they're designed and the way that they're made. When I recently needed a, uh, a way of working on eight by 20 foot woodcuts, uh, the solutions that I came up with necessitated that I make a giant table, eight by four foot table that rolls around, that enables me to like take these sheets of plywood off the wall and lay them flat and work on them one at a time. Um, and, you know, after drawing it out, much the same as drawing out my, you know, bunk beds for my kids or something, uh, you go downstairs, I've got like three tools and a couple of cordless drills and somehow out of that comes a very sturdy thing that, uh, you know, it's held up with several people standing on it or, or being on it at once. Uh, and the last thing is that downstairs I have a, a really great um, printing press, um, an etching press that was uh, originally built um, by the Union for Contemporary Art, a, a place that I, I, I deeply, deeply love here in Omaha, Nebraska. And uh, they established early on uh, these co-op studios where you could, uh, for, it, I remember it being about a hundred bucks a year, you would get access to all the equipment you would need for a studio that otherwise would be completely unavailable to you um, as soon as you graduate from college. Um, and so having these printmaking uh, abilities that, or uh, access to them open made it possible to uh, print larger and larger work. Um, in the case of this printing press, we, we knew we had um, a, an infinitesimal budget. Um, so, and printing presses like these are very expensive. We actually bought the plans for one online. We didn't actually purchase a, a printing press. And then we sent those plans to Hempel Steel, which is right around the corner from my studio, to cut sheet metal, um, drill the holes, uh, and give us the attachments. And then we just put it together. Uh, it sounds like a 19th century warship creaking and falling apart every time we use it, um, but it has also kind of transformed my life since, or my printmaking life since, since getting it here. And this being, you know, a handmade cobbled together thing, much like my tables or my uh, easel, uh, found its way here and, then, and now lives in the basement but facilitates nearly all the, the larger uh, prints that I've been able to do in the studio over the last several years.
One of the series that I'm working on right now is called 100 People, a public art series of uh, large-scale um, woodcut portrait murals of artisan and um, social advocates throughout Omaha. And that's, that's been an incredibly rewarding um, process to go through. It kind of started uh, right at the beginning of 2017. The first, the first models all came in um, in January of 2017. The way the process works is that uh, somebody presents themselves to me or I, I, I meet somebody for the first time. Uh, most recently, uh, uh, a seven-year-old remarkable young girl named Zuri uh, Jensen. Uh, and they, I meet them, they make some sort of impression on me. Um, sometimes I meet them in person, sometimes I see uh, the way a specific community is reacting to a person. Um, Sometimes they are people I've known for a while, sometimes they're uh, people who, those people I respect a lot, um, respect them, and they urge me to, to meet this person and see what they do. Omaha is, you know, it's a real city. It has all the problems that any other real city has. They have the same inequalities, the same struggles, the same strife, uh, the same chronic things that go wrong all the time. Uh, but the difference between an Omaha and a Chicago uh, probably is a lot about what happens on a different scale. Like it, everything's at a scale that you can do something about, or it feels like you can. You can see the effect of your own actions here in a way and in, in an immediacy that you can't, you can't otherwise. And being able to see that kind of uh, influence of your own work um, in a neighborhood so quickly, in a city so quickly, is is so rare. It's something that I never saw in Chicago. I, you know, in talking with the people who, um, who I was working with, who I was mentoring, mentored by, uh, they would hope to be able to see any sort of change within their life. That they would see the kids that they work with, and then ten years later, they would see that they are in a different place than they once were, or that they did things that they didn't do before. Uh, all these things that here. It, you know, it's easy to feel spoiled that uh, you know whether or not the thing that you are doing is affecting um, the world around it in the way that you were hoping it would. People are really kind of absurdly enthusiastic about somebody who just wants to do wants to do something and is has enough social capital to figure out how to how to go do it, how to make it happen.